Hi there, Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio here. There's a particular kind of text message from my business partner and co-founder, Paul, that I both dread and look forward to. And it usually reads, Christian, I've had an idea. I dread it because it means this is usually going to be really, really expensive. But I look forward to it because it means we're about to embark on a sonic adventure. That is no exception here. Percussion Swarm, part of our swarm range of groups of instruments playing in our spiritual home air studios. This is one of my contextual tutorials, but unlike other ones where I show you how the library works in context of other sample libraries, I've made an entire track from Percussion Swarm and I've done a few little cheeky tricks to get the kind of width, breadth and bandwidth that I want. So I'm just going to go through one track at a time. So I've got some mastering on, which I'll take off for now. I'm also using a very early beta version, so you may see some buttons that are empty, that kind of stuff, that'll be fixed by the time you get your hands on this. So you'll see every single instance is a different instrument or articulation from Percussion Swarm. Let's just take off some of these effects. So starting with this amazing chimes and phones. What Percussion Swarm is, is a bunch of the world's top percussionists playing interesting combinations of instruments, sometimes unison, sometimes uh, combinations of different instruments. So this is absolutely inspiring stuff there. So this is what I've done with it. I've put a bit of delay on it and there's a reason for that. Let's just run this. That little atmospheric ting, I wanted to make something of it. So I've just put a bit of delay on and a bit of reverb to make it even more spacious. Something I don't usually do in these tutorials is dive into the mics, but it's so important for a library like this. Any library recorded at air, the different mic positions give you a totally different aspect of the recording, but with percussion, they can sound like entirely different instruments. So on this one, I'm just using close valve, which is my favorite close mic on this particular library. There's a lot of bright colors, and the valve mic just bevels off a bit of that toppy topness that you get with the condenser mics, which also sound great, really sparkly. So that's all I'm using on this. Next up is the kind of star of the show are these incredible glockenspiels. Let's have a listen to those. So no additional reverb other than the different mic positions. So let's just have a listen to this. You're always going to get the hall in a close mic with percussion because of the reverberant nature of the room, the tree. So the tree already sounds magnificently distant. I've also automated in slightly later on, just to give it a little bit more interest, some delay. Now, something I noticed on this piano that we've been sampling in the hall is you get a little bit of a kind of thunk noise on higher percussive notes recorded in the hall. And just for this one instrument, I put a bit of a scoop in. Hear that kind of that. And I've just basically filtered that out here. Another alternative with that kind of thunk is you might want to keep it in, but just roll it off out of the actual reverb, roll that frequency out of the reverb. So next up, glass glockenspiels. I wish I was there to see these things. And uh, they're playing a similar line. Now you'll notice those don't feel as even. That's because it's my dodgy playing. I basically reduced the quantized strength down to 35% so that they sound together, but not MIDI together, if you know what I mean. And again, we've got this delay coming up here.
And the thing to remember with these instruments is that you have different articulations. So this is the, the single hit, but also we've got these amazing sticks doing a swarmy kind of sound. And for this, I'm using the valve and the ambient. Let's have a listen without the ambient. Very detailed. Little bit of room in there that are playing very softly though. Let's have a listen to the ambient. Now those are kind of much, much higher up than the tree mic is basically eight feet off the ground, just above the conductor's head. And the percussionists tend to play at the back of the hall behind the rest of the orchestra. And we always place instruments where they should go in the room so that when you load this up with your different recordings made at Air Studios, it'll all lock together. So just a quick reminder of the valve and the ambient. So an entirely different kind of effect. And together, it's the detail and the widescreen expanse. It's got these sensational bowed marimbas, which are that's always a testament to someone who can play a marimba with a double bass bow. Quite incredible. And for this, I'm using a real mixture of mics. Quick peek with this. Add tree. gives it a bit of depth, and then the width. And I'm using the same marimba preset, but different articulation. So that's the bowed. This is the swarmy kind of sound, insane sound, this. And you'll see that I've done away with the close mic, and I'm just using the tree and the ambient. It's basically just sit under the glockenspiels and just give it a bit of width again. bit of rumble there. Kalimbas next up, which are incredibly dark sounding in the context of the hall, just using the close valve and the tree on this. beautiful, amazing, thunderous sound. And I'm also using some kalimba hits, and I've been a bit of a cheeky monkey here. If we have a listen to them originally, they sound like this. Again, close, so we've got that attack, brightness, kind of clarity, tree, and ambient. And then what I did was take it down by two here. All that yummy sub, I love it. Wah chimes next up, incredible sounding instruments, and these are the pitched cloud. Nothing on these, just a spot of valve and ambient. Now, something I hear in a lot of people's demos is they use like these really big hits, not realizing that the bright top end is the stuff that gives you a real sense of, oh, this is getting really big. So I always find like the use of a, a pinging piccolo can make it sound really enormous. And that's no exception here. So I found a combination of these anklungs. These are just soft, short hits, which have a kind of wooden quality to them. And I've combined that with one of the warped instruments, which what I love about the warps on percussion swarm is they really relate to the percussion instruments. They're very much part of the family. They're just kind of hyped up a little bit like I'm kind of detuning and doing these little bits with delays and stuff like that. So let's have a listen to Pangea. That's my piccolo along with a thing called Siberia. Combined with the Anklung. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We've got some of these amazing Udus. So I took those and I pitched them down an octave. I'm just going to take the EQ off. So we're effectively kind of almost changing the sample rate when you pitch it down. So you really do lose that top end. So I've rectified that with adding a little bit of this. So without. 
this feels just a, a little bit muffled and for that again this mixture of valve and tree you'll see that you know you don't have to work particularly hard with the mics so i'm just swishing them in and go yeah i want i want that kind of sound but it's just amazing to make the most of a what is a natural reverberation um i then tracked it with the ones pitched at the normal level and what i did is i just did a flip left and right so although the samples would be the same but at different pitches i just think it's great to get a, a different aspect so let's just hear that without and with and combined got this Udu slapped, got this great kind of Udu riser, if you will, crescendo. Amazing. Got some more hits later on. I took this Siberia sound and have mucked around with this too so I first distorted it and then give us this kind of heartbeat effect to heighten the tension right let's get to some of this pitch stuff now this amazing pad called Amazonia now it comes with a big old reverb that literally goes on forever. So uh, I didn't find that particularly usable, so I switched that off and just replaced it with my own fab filter. So this is a lot of fun. What I've done with this one, so I've copied that instrument with the reverb. I've added some distortion to it. Should we just switch that automation off and let's have a listen to this. Here's the distortion you can hear. And then I put some tempo synced tremolo. I find with these low sounds, a bit of distortion will help them cut through the mix. It may sound a little bit glitchy and wrong there, but in the context of the mix, you will actually hear it, you will register it. And as you can see, I've got some fairly interesting automation that takes us up and really cuts it off dead there so that we make the most of this percussive bass sound up here. So we've got our Amazonia pad which echoes what we had with these marimbas, these bowed marimbas and wah chimes up here. And again, I took the convolution reverb that was on the plugin off and just replaced it with my own reverb so I could have control over that length and all of that kind of stuff. Finally, just a little bit of mastering. Don't like to change the character of the sound too much because Jake Jackson knows what he's doing and these percussions know how to make their instruments sing so beautifully. So just a tiny bit of smile there. I found as I built up the tracks that maybe we were just hitting the kind of 2K mark a bit too much, just extra sparkle there. And I always chop off the bottom so the mix is more efficient. Then just a touch of kind of fat compressor just to take away some of the peaks so that we could just get the mix sounding a bit kind of louder all the way. And because I'm very much a competitor in the loudness wars, we've got an L3 there. You know, it's not a purist's track that we're playing here. I'm not scared of brick wall limiting it a bit. You know, I've been pitching stuff down, an octave, distorting it, that kind of stuff. So, you know, a bit of sausage love is uh, uh, not inappropriate for a track like this. I can't wait to use this with my other air libraries, Albion One, the Symphonic series, but most of all hands in the percussion. I was really tempted because obviously I'm creating a trailer track to use some of that massive hands in the percussion, but I felt that it would have meant that our customer service department was inundated going, well, I, I can't find that drum there and it's like unknitting all of that. So what I thought I'd do in the case of a library that's so enigmatic is to just create a trailer that has its little troughs and peaks and dynamism just from the library alone. I'm certain that it's going to be a massive inspiration for you as it has done for me. And I can't wait to hear what you're going to do with it. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, well, there'll be loads of interesting videos coming up. Ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time we put a video up. And thanks ever so much for watching. One of those for the amazing team at Air Studios, Jake Jackson and these three amazing percussionists. See you next time.